from the deep, deep caverns of a Toyota Corolla, live, it's Jimmy Tabacky. Guess who? That's right, Jimmy Tobacco. Tobacco. That's too formal. This is Jimmy Tobacco. How are you guys tonight? Good to see you. Just thought I'd add that little intro in there. Man, it took me hours to put that together, dude. I didn't use one of those pre-programmed editing things and relied on my 35 years of audiovisual experience to cut and paste the whole thing together. But anyway, here we are, and I'm sitting in my 2014 Toyota Corolla. So, good news today. Took Lucy to the vet, and she had her bandage on, the old one from last week. But uh, brought her in to get that changed, and a few minutes later they came out, and she had no bandage on. So, this little kid is really, really healing. She was so happy, running around all over the place, but the vet said, you got to be sure to put the collar on here, her. You know those dumb plastic cones that they give everybody? Or give everybody. Give all the dogs when they have operations and stuff. Well, the one they gave her is about twice From the, the deep, size deep caverns of, a of Lucy. 2014 and you know Toyota how small Corolla. she is. It's the wacky so world I didn't of want Jimmy to put it on Tabaki. her, and I really tried not to put it on her, but and keep her just from licking the sutures and stuff. But uh, sure enough, she started licking it, and so I took the thing and I cut it down. Um, a whole lot so that it would be smaller and I put it on her and so far so good she's not complaining actually she's lying down here next to me and sleeping so let's hope and pray it stays that way anyway what's new well what's new is not much still hanging out got my pipe thing going and uh, I still owe Mike at Briar Blues two reviews. Uh, I owe him a review on the pipe, and I owe him a review on the Best Brown Number no. Two. And I feel bad because I haven't gotten to it yet. But I will get to it hopefully by the end of the week. So, Mike, if you're listening, I know I'm late on this thing. And uh, I'll get it to you. Hey, sounds like he's having a fabulous, fabulous trip overseas. Uh, he posted some pictures on Instagram. And one of them was of Luigi Rodice. Uh, and he showed also a pipe. That was the first one Rodice had made uh I guess since he was 80 years old or he just turned 80 and he made a pipe, something like that. He'll tell us when he gets back. But guess what happened? Radice gave it to him. And in his comment he said, I was stunned. Well, in my opinion, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. I'm sitting in front of the convenience store again and there was a lurker walking behind me. You know how these guys do <laughs> It's funny. When they have the reporter on the street and everybody goes behind them to try and get on the camera. I uh, used to drive a 35-foot broadcast truck uh, years ago. And it was a combination truck. It was a production truck. And it also had a big KU band is what they call it, satellite dish, on top of it, so we could transmit and we could receive. Now, I didn't just drive the truck. I was also part of the video crew that operated the thing, and my department was the satellite department, so I was doing uplinks and downlinks. And during the 2000 election, you know, Florida was the big state that was in question, and 
they were counting all the votes again, and they invented the phrase hanging Chad, and Gore showed up down there, and Jesse Jackson showed up down there. Well, we ended up just absolutely camped out at this one parking lot downtown, and we were hardwired into a phone system. Um, I was running the truck <coughs> to broadcast <coughs> off of a built-in uh, PTO is what they call it. It's like a generator that works when you have the diesel engine running. And we had finished for the day, which was a long day. We had Fox News down there doing tapes and coming back to the truck to edit and send it up to their master control. Um, also, we went over to uh, an ABC affiliate and uh, we had some stuff that we had to uplink for airtime of World News Tonight. So we got that done. Well, we went back home, and I was beat, man, totally beat. So all of a sudden, the producer gets a phone call. There's some Korean television station that needs to upload some material for broadcast. Well, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I really don't feel like going up and powering up the truck and finding the bird in space and all of that stuff. But a gig's a gig. And actually, I love what I do. So we went over there, and I found the bird. And, uh, and we uploaded this stuff to Korea. So that was cool. That was a good uh, couple of years of work. Um, I actually learned how to drive a, a big truck. One of the reasons why I got chosen for doing the job is because I do have a CDLB. Always wanted the A, though, so I could drive the big rigs. You know, there's just some fascination about driving across the country and pulling over at a beautiful spot and spending the night. I'm going to cough. <coughs> Forgive me. Smoker's cough. Piper's cough, cigar, cigar cough, and cigarette cough. But doing better on the cigarettes, much better on the cigarettes. So, anyway, just wanted to check in with you, wanted to share this uh, new introduction. I'm trying to get into this production thing, man. It's bringing back memories. The thing is, it's really hard to do it on a mobile phone. So I'm beginning to look into um, used or refurbished or reconditioned or whatever they want to call it, uh, iPads, because I'd really like to edit on iMovie. And then I figured the way I can get it to YouTube is to just find a Wi-Fi uh, place. And... Actually, my son told me tonight that I could turn on my hotspot on my phone and I should be able to use the iPad using my network's hotspot, if that's the way it works. If anybody knows, please tell me. I would appreciate it. So, I just wanted to check in with you. I was kind of excited about my homemade intro. It really brought back a lot of memories when I had to make stuff work in the audiovisual business. Back then, we had uh, multiple slide projectors. We had a computer that could program up to 30 slide projectors uh, at a time. And uh, to create animation, obviously, you needed to do it very carefully, and you needed a ton of images, and you needed to time the projectors so that the timing between images would be perfect and give you that film effect. Uh, it was really a lot of fun, a lot of work. But a lot of fun. Boy, technology has changed. Anyway, guys, see you soon. And maybe if I'm able to, the next time we'll play this out with some music. So take care. Jimmy Tabaki, see ya.